November 1961, NASA pilots test the X-15 rocket plane. Prepare to go. Launch. Your angle looks good, Bob. Speeding to Mach 6, NASA reaches out for the edge of space. Got 12 six. still good. Fantastic up here. But unbeknown to the American public, these rocketry milestones have been built on technology from an unlikely source. Nineteen forty. World War II rages as London burns under relentless aerial bombardment. But deep within Nazi Germany, Hitler's plans for a new long-range superweapon are being hatched. The V-2 rocket is the world's first ballistic missile and will leave Britain defenseless. But the V-2 has come at great cost to the Nazi war effort. However, these early lessons in rocketry will mark the surprising first steps towards manned spaceflight. And the mastermind behind the V-2 rocket, scientist Werner von Braun, will later become an unlikely giant of the American space program. At the end of the war, US agents capture over 100 German scientists, including von Braun and recruit them to develop weapons for the US Army. The story of von Braun's arrival in the States dates back much further than that. It was very clear that the Allies were winning the war. They had to decide who they should surrender to. They were too concerned about the treatment that they would get from the Russians. And that left the United States Von Braun and his team were shipped over to the States in September 1945, along with 15 tons of paperwork and more than 100 V-2 rockets. On arrival in America, Von Braun continues to develop the V-2 rocket for the US Army, working on the rockets captured from Nazi Germany. Von Braun and his team were clearly interested in pushing the technology forwards improving the performance of the V2, refining some of the systems that controlled the flight. Eventually, they started flying two-stage rockets where the V2 was the first stage and they had an additional booster as the second stage. With this small young missile called the WAC Corporal, fresh out of Pasadena, California, the V2 WAC Corporal combination marked for the first time the blending in action of American and German rocket brains a combination that was destined to have its rendezvous with history. As the Cold War gathers momentum, both superpowers realize the conflict will be won or lost on the power of technology. With missiles reaching higher and higher altitudes, it becomes clear that the ultimate symbol of superiority will be the conquest of space. The space race was essentially an arms race, but rather than using weapons of war, it was about the development of space technology. This battle between two competing superpowers, communism, capitalism, the United States and the Soviet Union. And what better stage could there be for you to convince the rest of the world that your system was superior than the stage of space exploration? Supremacy in space was vital. It said to the world, we have the technological superiority over our rivals. And this is why it came as such a shock to the United States when the Russians launched the first artificial satellite to orbit the Earth. the people on this fast shrinking planet heard about it, many of them watched it, all of them read about it. In 1957, the US learns of several spectacular Soviet space victories that send shockwaves across America. On October the 4th, 1957, 
the Soviet Union launches Sputnik 1, the world's first artificial satellite. Sputnik really put the United States into crisis. It was a global event. The Americans were absolutely shocked that a dictatorship suddenly beats them to the first hurdle, which was to put the first object into orbit around the Earth. Every day it was orbiting the Earth 16 times, and every day it was passing over American territory. There was nothing they could do about it, and that's why it had such a powerful effect on their psyche. Desperation, the United States looked to the vanguard. Nearly 200 newsmen from all over the world were flown down for the big turkey shoot. And inside the blockhouse, the tension steadily mounted. had never been lower than at this moment, December 6, 1957. As people were basking in the awe over Sputnik, this was called Flopnik, because of course it got nowhere. It was at that point the American army with Werner von Braun were unleashed to launch a satellite within 60 days. And von Braun and his army team launched the first American satellite on the 31st of January, 1958. In 1958, Washington forms a research organization to accelerate an American space program. NASA is born. Von Braun was enveloped within this expanding NASA organization that hoovered up all of those different departments of Air Force, Army and civilian activities to create the infrastructure that could mobilize major programs. Von Braun and his men immediately begin work on a heavy lift vehicle that they believe will give America the lead in the space race. Having stumbled at every hurdle in the race, there was further humiliation for the United States with the launch of Yuri Gagarin. He was the first human being to orbit the Earth, and that's all he did, one complete orbit and then lands successfully. I say that's all he did, but we need to remember, of course, that every second he was traveling five miles. And he landed as a global hero. He was fated by the Soviet Union as a triumph of what was possible under a communist society. It really put a lot of pressure on the White House. How could you have let our country fall behind so badly? How could it be possible that the Russians could launch an artificial satellite, and then secondly, launch um, a human being. So the Americans felt this very, very deeply indeed. Kennedy said at the time, we're going to have to take more hits before we pull ahead. And that was the view, simply head down, focus, keep going. One month later, the United States responds with Project Mercury and launches astronaut Alan Shepard to become America's first man in space. Your attention, please. On low mark, T-minus 15 minutes. T-minus 15 minutes and counting. Status check, pressurization. Locks taking, you are go. Order systems, go. Range operations. Mercury capsule, go. All pre-start panel lights are correct. The ready light is on. Eject Mercury umbilical. Oil evacuate. Mercury umbilical clear. Lights on. All recorders to fast. T minus eight seconds and counting engine start. Bolts and lift off. All right, uh, lift off and the clock has started. This is Freedom 7, reading you loud and clear. Control is smooth. What a beautiful view.
although Shepard's flight is a success, President Kennedy believes America must now show the world they can supersede all Soviet achievements. President Kennedy begins a tour of four space installations at Huntsville, Alabama, where he is greeted by Dr. Verna von Braun, space pioneer and director of this research and development center. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. No single space project in this period will be more impressive to mankind or more important for the long-range exploration of space. And none will be so difficult or expensive to accomplish. Godspeed, John Glenn. Roger, zero G, and I feel fine. Oh, that view is tremendous. Kennedy's pledge will inspire the American people, calm hysteria, and unite an army of engineers to take up his challenge.